Good morning, Harvest Christian Fellowship family, friends, acquaintances, those who are watching this video. Um, I want to first of all uh, thank God those uh, who have uh, kind of stepped in for us while we have been out. Um, we will be back this Sunday. Um, we miss our family, our church family, our friends, all our people, all the things that are going on, of course, um, being out on a uh, celebrating our 20th. 21st and year anniversary really 21 years uh suzanne and i we've been married um seven kids grandson uh continue uh to just uh be blessed and of course a, a new son-in-law uh being blessed uh being able to uh take a couple weeks to go out and to uh come over here to hawaii uh, we've been at the big islands uh, for about a week and now we are in maui for a week so I'll show you a little where we are, and this is kind of our suite. It's like a two, uh, one bedroom suite, two balconies. Beautiful, beautiful uh, area. Uh, really nice uh, time of meditation, nice time of prayer, of enjoyment. Um, the beach is right there. I mean, walking right over that berm, boom, you're right there at the beach. I think there's, I'm not sure if there's people swimming there or what that is right there. I, th I think those are just rocks. Yeah, I think those are just rocks right there. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful time. And um, but um, again, for His grace, His mercy, His love. Uh, we joined you guys for Sunday service, and I want to thank Pastor Toby, all the deacons and elders and praise team who stepped up uh, to take our place. Um, I know it's not an easy task. Uh, these uh, guys who do it. Uh, whether they're preaching, uh, like Pastor Toby, or uh, whether you're up there leading praise and worship, um, or organizing these, uh, those who are were up there don't do it every week. Um, so um, they're not going to do it like I do it, or like Suzanne does it, you know, or whatever. Because we have a lot of practice. We've been we do it every week. We 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 know the rhythm. We feel we have that gift. God has uh, endowed us with certain gifts, um, and Suzanne and I, we have uh, the gift in leading worship, and we have the gifts of uh, preaching and, and etc. And uh, as you know, Pastor Toby was a te is more of a teacher than he is a preacher, so uh, everyone, God gives everyone the gift, but nonetheless, those who have were able to go up there and fill in and to sit, uh, you know, use their gifts uh, for that purpose. I want to thank God for you guys. Thank you so much for filling in. Um, and yes, we know it's, it's not the same with us being there. And, and we thank God. You know, we we know that. Um, that's what makes us, uh, you know, unique to each and every one of us. And that's why I always say when someone is missing, you can tell there's a difference in missing. People need to be there. People need to worship. I want to thank God for all of you guys, all of our church members and family uh, and Christians there at Harvest who uh, helped out in any way and, and just kind of, you know, was there to support and to bless Pastor Toby and the team there. Um, I want to thank God for you guys who were there uh, during that time. You know, sometimes, um, you know, we don't, we've missed probably two Sundays in 20 years. Uh, one in our 10 year anniversary when we had to go to uh, New York and then uh, we, we weren't there in Phoenix Church. And then, um, and then our 20 year and our 21 year anniversary. And so, uh, we don't miss that much because we know the importance of the Christian family. And I want to thank God for you guys and, and for being there and supporting our brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, and the leadership at Harvest and Harvest, etc. So thank you guys so much. Um, so today, um, you guys know Wednesday night, uh, I usually do the preaching and teaching, and Pastor Toby's been doing Friday night, and uh, we are three hours, three hour difference from here, so right, so when it's 11 o'clock uh, over there, it is only uh, 8 o'clock over here, so 8, 9, 10, 11, that's right, so 8 o'clock over here, 8 o'clock in the morning, so we are still early morning while it's 11 something over there in Phoenix. So our time uh, shift is different, 
Um, so we are up pretty early Hawaiian time, uh, but pretty late when it comes down to Phoenix time. We're trying to keep make sure that we don't adapt ourselves, uh, you know, differently, you know, etc. So anyway, um, or adapt ourselves so that we're like used to this time. Then we get over there. Next thing you know, we're waking up at one o'clock in the afternoon or 12 o'clock because we think it's only nine, but it's not. So anyway, um, let's talk about uh, the book of Isaiah. I was reading, uh, I've been reading and studying every morning and 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 I've uh, been in the book of Isaiah. We go over here to Isaiah chapter six, Isaiah chapter six here. Okay, there we go. And it says, um, it says, I'm gonna try, of course I don't have my computer, so we're gonna do our best here. Um, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted and the train of his robe filled the temple okay what that means is that you can imagine like uh you know the end of his robe the tail of that the is filling the temple okay uh, the train the whole part of his robe imagine a king's robe just flowing flowing all the way across okay i'll put my glasses down here um flowing all the way across all right so then it says um above it stood cherub, cherubim, I'm sorry, seraphim, and each one had six wings with two covered in his face, with two covered in his feet, with two he flew, and one cried to another. Okay, and this is, these are actually angelic hosts, not just angels as in messengers or something. These are angelic seraphim. Cherubim are a form of angelic hosts, okay? And they were crying to one another, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Let's see. There we go. All right. There we go. Um, and the the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, "Woe is me, for I am undone." Okay, this is Isaiah. Isaiah sees all this, and Isaiah starts like kind of freaking out, like, "Oh my goodness!" He's like, "I am." I'm undone. He's like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. Okay, that's the actual word. He says, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Okay, so Isaiah immediately understands that he is, he is like, he's had it. He realizes like, I have, I have seen God. I mean, I'm, I'm looking up and I'm seeing this vision. I'm seeing the seraphim flying and I'm seeing them crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And he's, as he sees this, he sees the whole earth is shook, shook. I mean, the doorposts are shook and he's like, really like, I've, I'm done. I'm done. I've had it. He's like, I'm dead. I'm dead. I've seen the king. I've seen the Lord. He's like, uh, I can't, I, I'm, I'm finished. And he knows, he knows that what he's seen there is, is, is marvelous because he's thinking to himself, if I'm seeing God, I, I'm, I'm dead. This is my, God is ready to meet me, is meeting me. And I'm, 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 I'm heading out. He says, and then he says, I'm, I'm, I have unclean lips and I dwell in among, among the people of unclean lips. And he's saying that he's like, I'm not even worthy. And I'm, I'm not worthy, and these people are not worthy. How can we even be worthy? We're, we're finished. We're finished. And we, we can kind of think about that ourselves. Like, how can God use us? And why would God even use people like us? You know, I mean, we are a people of unclean lips. We are a people. I mean, I, you, you watch television just a moment. And you spend time with people of the world and... You know, just walking in public these days, it's almost like there has to be censorship. People are just throwing profanity like as if it was just second nature. You know, like it's, I mean, there's like, there was no mannerisms. There's no, there's no, uh, what do you call it? Like etiquette anymore. It's like people are cussing, people are blaspheming, using the name of the Lord in vain, just cussing and just saying what they want to say and not even caring about God and, 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 
and even in ourselves, in our minds, in our thoughts, you know, we, we are a people of unclean lips and unclean mind and just in nature, natural, naturally, we are people who are, who are not worthy to hear and to see God and to live. And Isaiah felt that. And maybe you're feeling it. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'm unworthy. And, and we are. We'll, we'll never be worthy. No matter what happens, we'll never be worthy. But maybe you're unworthy. Maybe you feel like I'm unworthy. Why would God want to use me? Why, why am I going through what I'm going through? You know, how can I, how can I see God? I'm, I'm a sinner. I've failed so many times. I've made false promises. I said, okay, God, I promise, I promise. And I didn't make this. And or maybe I said, I'm going to do this, and this is going to change, but it doesn't change. And you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And you're trying to ask God, how can, how can God use me? How can God use me? And you're right, without God's intervention, how can God use you? God has to intervene. God has to intervene. Um, without God's intervention, we cannot be used by God. We are unworthy. We are unclean people with unclean lips. God has to intervene into our lives. Okay, He has to intervene. And um, just like Isaiah would look up into the sky, like we see here, see here boom, and and imagine the clouds open up, and there you see God. You would you would immediately know that you're in trouble. That this world is in trouble. That this world is condemned. You know, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then it says, For God did not send His Son to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who does not believe is condemned already, but he who believes has everlasting life. They are condemned because they have not believed in the name of the Son of God. So, imagine that open up and you're seeing the Lord. In order for you to be saved, God has to intervene. And that's exactly what he did with Isaiah. Let's read on. In Isaiah chapter, uh, chapter 6, finish. In Isaiah chapter 6, it says, Then the seraphim flew to me, having in his hands, hand, a live coal which he had taken from the from the tongs from the altar and he touched my mouth with it and said behold this has touched your lips your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged okay so what do you say to him he has touched your, your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged so immediately immediately he, he had from the altar, from the altar, and touched his lips. And when he touched his lips, he says, now your iniquity is, is, he says, your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Now your sin is purged. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. It's like, hello, Isaiah, got it. That's exactly what God has to do in our lives. He's got to take away our iniquity and he's got to purge our sin. And the only way that can happen to anyone for us to even be worthy and God's intervention comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who takes away our sins and per takes away our iniquities and purges our sins. Jesus is the only way you can find yourself worthy before God. He is the only way you can find truth, you can find peace, you can find the ability to stand before God and live and not say, I'm finished, I'm done, I'm undone. God has had it with me. He is the only way you can find life. You can be saved and find life. Other than that, outside of that, you cannot be saved. Outside of that, without God's intervention, you cannot be saved. You cannot be, you cannot do what God calls you to do and, and speak the things that God has for you outside of God's intervention. And that happens through Jesus Christ. So you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm unworthy, I'm undone, I'm unfinished. Well, there's a way you can do that. You turn to the Lord, give your heart to Jesus Christ, surrender if you have not done so already, to do so, to give your heart to Jesus Christ, to ask Jesus Christ into your life, because the coal, the fire that must come to purge you has to come from God's altar. It's the only way 
has to come from God's altar. It cannot come from any other way but through God's, but by God's altar only. Not the altar of religion, not the altar of this world, but God's altar. And how does that come? Through the Holy Spirit. John was asked in the Gospel of Luke and in other places. John the Baptist was baptized. John the Baptist was asked, Are you the Christ? John replies to them, I am not the Christ. And then he goes on, he goes, there's someone who comes after me, whose sandals I am not able to untie or to loose. He said, he said, I baptize you with water, but he who comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, with Holy Spirit and with fire. You know, I mean, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about Jesus baptizing us with the holy fire, the fire of God. And when you look at Acts chapter ten, Acts, Acts chapter two, when the or I'm sorry, yeah, Acts chapter two, when the disciples are up in the upper room praying, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came with tongues of fire, fire. Again, the fire is indication of purging and burning and, and disintegrating and, and and taking away our iniquities. And, and, and then we know in 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 5, 2, 12, so I think 1st or 2nd Corinthians 2, 12 says, For God did not give us the spirit of the world, but the spirit that's from God, that we might know the things that God has really given to us, that we need His Holy Spirit fire that purges and burns us. And that's burns our sin away, purges our sin, cleanses us. Without that, we cannot be saved. We need the Holy Spirit fire to purge us. Just like Isaiah needed the hot coal from the altar to touch his lips, we need the hot coal from God's altar, the Holy Spirit fire to purge and take away our sins through Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus Christ does for us. Now that we have been purged and cleansed through the blood of Christ, and you have been, if you've accepted the Lord, if you turned your heart to Jesus, you're like, well, I don't, I, I still, I'm still having problems. I get it. Isaiah was not a perfect, he wasn't a perfect man. And Isaiah still had issues, but he knew that he was now worthy. Why? Because of the blood of Christ. How do we know that? Well, let's take a look here. Let me see here a second. In Isaiah chapter six, we continue. I also heard the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and tell this people. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, until those cities are laid waste and without inhabitant. All right. So he goes on and goes, the reason why is because these guys have forsaken God's, God's way. But think about this. Who shall, God says, who shall I send? And, and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am. Send me. So the Elohim the Elohim, the Lord, the voice of the Lord, says, who will go for the Elohim? Who will go and declare my word? Now, if you would have told that to Isaiah in the very beginning, he would have been like, I can't go. There's no way I can, I can go. I'm not even worthy. I'm not even worthy to be here to see you, God. I'm not even worthy to be here. I'm undone. I'm finished. I got unclean lips. But then after, after he receives the spirit of fire, after he's receives a call the lord said who shall ascend and and isaiah says send me send me i'll go i will go and and he went from i can't go i, I i'm unworthy to i'm well worthy i will go send me and he says i'm going to send you to them but they're going to tell them they hear but they don't understand they see cannot see they hear you know etc and all these things their heart is dull you know etc i'm going to send you these stubborn people now kind of again reminds us of of the uh, book of acts you had the apostles the disciples who were hiding in acts chapter 2 they're hiding they're hiding in the upper room 
they're hiding they're hiding from persecution they're hiding because they know that people are hunting them down because they they um they know jesus because they're part of jesus they're hiding they're praying they're up in the upper room praying they see the risen christ but they still even after seeing the risen christ they still are hiding but the bible says in acts chapter 2 when they had received the holy spirit fire when they were baptized in the holy spirit then they were able to go out i mean even jesus tells them in acts chapter 1 but go and wait in jerusalem but you, until you shall receive power from the holy spirit and then you will be witnesses to me in all Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that's exactly what happened. They were powered, they received power and empowered to preach the gospel. Because when a person receives the Holy Spirit, they now have the power to become witnesses. Not only just the power, but now they become worthy to do it. And they were able to preach the gospel. And so it is with Isaiah. He received power and was empowered to go and preach the gospel. He said, I'm worthy. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to speak. Prior to that, I wasn't ready. I didn't have it. But now I'm ready. I'm ready to speak. And he goes and he speaks. And he preaches the gospel. And then God even tells him, I'm going to send you to a world. And he goes, this world, this world is dull of hearing. Seeing they do not perceive, hearing they do not hear, they are dull, they are just stubborn, they don't understand, they don't want to, but that doesn't mean we don't go. I mean, why do we ask the Lord, you, you want to send me to this? You already know the answer. They, These guys are, are stubborn. They don't want to hear you. They don't want to listen to you, God, and yet you're still sending us, you know, reminds me of the story of um, Moses. When Moses, uh, when God tells Moses, hey, Moses, I want you to go and I want you to uh, go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. But um, I'm going to harden his heart and he's going to say no. <laughs> Hold on, God, you're telling me, you're telling me to go to someone that you're going to make him say no. And God's like, this is all part of my purpose. This is all part of my will. This is all part of my plan. And just because a lot of people do not want to hear, or just because a lot of people reject and they don't want to know or they don't want to perceive, does not mean that we're still not called to go. We are called to go. We are still called to go. We are still called to preach, to speak to the people, to let them know about Jesus, to let them know that the, the salvation, that salvation is in Christ. Even if it's just to tell them, just so that God can say to them, I told you, you, you made your own decision. You made your own choice. You heard it. Folks, let me tell you something. If you don't go, if you don't tell your family, your friends, the people around you about Jesus, Jesus is going to send somebody to do it. It's not, Jesus is not going to sit there and go, oh, my plan, I can't do it. You know, someone's going, ahead. he's going to find someone to do it and they will do it. So it is our calling, it is our job, it is our duty, because we have received the Holy Spirit fire, we've been purged, our sins have been purged, to do it. Who's going to do it if we don't do it? We need to tell people about Jesus, we need to confess those, there's opportunity around, I'm not saying that you're an open air preacher to go out there in the streets and preach, not everybody's that. Not everyone's going to be able to hold a sign, but let me even tell you right now that there are opportunities all over the place. Whether you're at the store, whether you're on vacation, there's opportunities when people speak with you. When you have conversation or people say things to you or maybe you overhear some things. You know, you tell them about the Lord. You tell them about Christ. You tell them about, about Jesus. You know, even yet yesterday, Suzanne and I were out in the jacuzzi and just kind of relaxing and, and there were a bunch of people there and some people in the back, some people in the front, and we're having this conversation. And we started talking about Angel uh, Mainville, you know, and how he has, how he always smiles and giggles and how he's in the military and everything. And we kind of talked a bit about, about joy and how important joy is. And, but see, the opportunity opened up. And the opportunity opens up with different types of conversations people have. You know, you don't have to be like, Oh, who's your favorite team? Oh, my favorite team is the Dallas Cowboys. Who's your favorite team? Oh, my favorite team is Jesus. You know, you don't have to be like that. But you could be like, yeah, I love Arizona Cardinals. You know, I continue praying 
that God will continue to, you know, grant them protection. You know, God, it's so important for in our lives to have the protection of Christ in our lives. You know, it's just everything. I mean, see how the opportunity opens up. You can open up the opportunity when God allows you to. And you don't have to preach to people. You don't have to. There's opportunity for you to tell your testimony and to talk about you, about how God worked in you and maybe how God worked in other people. Um, you know, we there were some guys who were on the side of the road. They looked like they were kind of confused. So we pulled up as we we're about to exit our resort and we saw them. You know, and, and we asked them some direction. They're like, yeah, two year, two things up the road. And they said, do you think you give us a ride? And they started laughing. I said, yeah, come on. And they jumped in. So all three of them jumped in and we took them up. And while we were going, I said I said to them, uh, they're like, oh, I don't know what to do tomorrow. I said, how about going to church? You guys think about going to church? Look, there's a great, there's a great couple of good churches here. It's important. And they're like, guys, yeah, yeah, we need to go. I said, you definitely need to go. And then the opportunity opened up for the gospel to be preached opportunities open up you need to speak the opportunity whether it's in talking with people fishing whether it's talking with people in your hobbies or your schooling or whatever it is the opportunity opens up so allow God to do that let me pray with you guys and I'll let you go father God we thank you Lord for your blessing we ask you father God that you allow us these divine appointments so that we may talk to people about Jesus so we may talk to them talk to people about the Lord and to seek your face father let it be integrated in us Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise you for everything that you do, Lord. You are so good to us. Put your hedge of protection around us, guide us, and lead us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Christ be with you. In Jesus' name.